Um, I'm gonna wrap up this evening. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's been a pretty long week for me too. Uh, we're gonna have open sharing session. Um, maybe just wanna get like solid some feedback. What do you think about the uh, educam? Uh, maybe you have questions for uh, well, any of our speakers. Uh, we'll do address it now. Or uh, video. Okay. No. Anyway. <laughs> so, so these are these are these are challenges. Um, many parents don't want to wait, and you will probably find that a lot of the e-learning will probably be driven from the home through tablets, through mobile phones, and so on, rather than through government initiatives. Probably, you know, we are always hopeful that the government can do something, especially for the rural areas and so on. Unfortunately, we don't have a very good track record. Uh, I think the Klein Valley households will obviously do what you're saying, driven from the home. But the rural areas don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. right? the rural areas have to wait for the government to you know, take time. Because they're low, let's say low profile, they're low priority to the government. I think. But not straight, because 
you know, the last get, you know, any sort of modern conveniences or infrastructure, which is unfortunate. So I think that <clears throat> terribly marginalized, incredibly marginalized. And, and all this actually leads to almost like a final crystallization. I mean, after after running Educamp for half a year. Um, the reality has, to, I mean, for me anyway, uh, and I think for many of the, the really hardcore regular edu campers as well, I don't know whether I, I believe that you share the same uh, sentiment is that the education divide is accelerating at the speed of internet. <laughs> uh, those who are able to catch up are going to just scream way ahead. Um, the digital revolution has enabled that, you know, education, the, the platform for education, the new kind of academy, how many topics, how many subjects. Uh, you see in the US right now, all the top universities are putting their entire course online for free. You know, that, and what you say is correct. People, people, the, 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 the community is not divided to those who still think that the US education is very expensive, I can't afford it, blah, 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 and those who are like, no, there are ways. You know, and I, and I, and I Google the answer. I Google how I can get all this enable all these things. If I, if, I really, if I really can't go there, uh, I can still learn from it for free on, on, on the internet, online. Um, it's come to a point where on, on, on the developed nations or for the privileged, even with all that education there, you have a choice. Maybe you don't have to have that type of level of the, uh, education, that type of higher level tertiary level education. That, 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 is, that is one possible goal, but we live in an age where it's not the only goal. Um, and, 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 and this has constantly been validated. I mean, if you see tonight, um, here, you all here today, it's as diverse as it gets. Um, young, old, student, professionals, uh, going to retire soon, maybe. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, um, professionals, students, um, <coughs> activists, um, people who are already making changes um, in, in, in all sorts of various ways. Um, how do we all get here? It's, it's impossible to even think about this pre-digital revolution. But the divide is such that those who need to know about this is really no access. Like, completely no access. Those who, the moment that we have that access, the moment we are enabled, the moment we are able to get on, we just suddenly come to this level so fast. You know, you're talking about things, um, you can reach like-minded collaboration. The, the collective creativity can be sparked so fast with the digital age that it's made me question what exactly I'm going to do at EduCamp. And, and that's going to bring me to, to, to uh, my, next, my next section. But before that, anybody want to add any more to like, what I've just said? Are we in agreement? You know? Because, I mean, let, let, let me be actually, but this, this is going to be a very interesting EduCamp. Uh, when we first started EduCamp, we thought that, yeah, you know, uh, we were all inspired by Sir Ken Robinson's talk about education and stuff and elements and stuff. And then, and then I started preaching and evangelizing and sharing that and, and letting people know to watch this thing. What exactly does it mean? What exactly does it mean? What, is it, what exactly does it mean to be uh, searching for elements? What exactly does it mean to be passion driven? What exactly does it mean to be. And, and, and over the course, as, as more and more people like me, there are those who saw that and realized that, and there were also those who just realized that without understanding and without even watching that. There's a group think happening where it's already a self-realization. Um, how many of you have seen what I'm talking about? The Sir Ken Robinson's TED Talk. I, mean, all, I, I assume all of you. Uh, if you haven't, you should go and check it out. Uh, and there's a book as well, The Unknown. Um, I think all of us who have put our hands up probably have watched the video and you were just nodding your head. Yeah, you know, that's true. That's correct, exactly, you know. Um, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, uh, oh, I never thought about that moment. He was just nodding your head. It was more like he was, he's just basically voicing what you knew all along. He was really just articulating what we knew all along. And that was something that I also didn't realize when I just watched it. I thought, I thought it was a revolutionary thing. But then as I talked to more people, some people never seen that video, and, and they were like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. And then they come, oh yeah, I totally agree with that. It, it reinforced the fact that this is what um, the world is slowly waking up to. And it kind of like make the thing about what what sort of education problem are we trying to solve? You know, and, 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 and as we progressed there, then we started meeting people, um, trying to articulate that oh, you know, the current education system is broken, it's flawed, and so on and so forth. 
And then when we started emerging and getting teachers who are in this education system, uh, in the government schools, private schools, like that, we, got, we get all sorts coming and sharing and talking. Uh, again, I'm just sharing this realization because a lot of you are just new and, and didn't realize all the past thoughts. And then we realized that, you know what? The funny thing is that all these passionate teachers are already there making epic shit happen. They are already staring things up. All the, the stuff that we read or the stuff that we are trying to reproject back on the past, um, it's still there. It's still there, but it's not changing because the parents are not aware. That's another thing that we realize. You know, the challenge now is how to reach out to the parents. Because the parents are the ones who are going to be setting the pace. The parents are the ones who are going to be determining how the public schools are going to be and stuff. Like I say, the problem is those who are the, the privileged parents, those who are already on the internet, those who are already reading stuff, and so on, who realize the importance of, of education and stuff, most of the time, they are also the ones who can afford better education. You have to what I was saying? And those in the middle income group, are the ones who are sort of like struggling to make a living, you know, they, they themselves are in part, you know, caught in the vicious loop of their education industrial sort of things. Uh, they have stopped learning, you know. Um, they are the ones who are, you know, getting the, getting the idea. They are the same parents, I mean, I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, but they are the same parents who were brought up on a TV VCR diet, and now they're just applying back the TV VCR diet, but in, now in the form of PS3 and iPad and stuff more hands off, but it's not the end because more and more parents are getting aware. More and more par parents are, are, are concerned, you know? And this can only continue spreading because of the internet, because of technology, because of communication. It can only just continue spreading and stuff. So then I realized that, you know what? At this current pace, right, whatever we come and get together and try to think and solve would be obsolete pretty fast for those in the city urban areas, for those in the middle income stretching on for it's just it's just a question of just you going to meet another parent or those and, and just sharing this this, this thing and, and, and it's, it'll be viral the challenge is ultimately those who are not even at that level of able to grasp that those who can't even afford the internet or those who can't even read english or listen to english that's where the real to me like, yeah, uh, after going through half a year and again that is really 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 where help is needed that's really where the work needs to be done you know, it's, it's, it's not the, the middle one can find support. Always an opportunity to just figure it out. You know, the, the, the choice of even like say, if you happen to be in a government school and it's really tough and stuff, the option is there to say, okay, homeschool. Do the research, find out what you're getting into and make a very informed decision, uh, get the support from, from, from your peers and stuff. Solvable, the problem is really, really solvable for those who are really looking for, for, for the solution. The real one, the real challenges are, I, I think, I mean, even the star also had a, had a write-up about it, are those near the poverty line, no vision, not driven, don't even need to, you know, education, it's, it's, it's not even about opportunity for education, it's like I don't even need education. I'm happy where I am, you know. Uh, they, get, they get government subsidized computers with internet and what do they use it for? You know, Wikipedia, Google, I don't think so. <laughs> So what's next? I, I really want to, you know, uh, reach out to you guys and maybe get your thinking as well. Uh, but this is where, this is what I think. What's next? And and and, and, and I, I'll just let you all know, <clears throat> and uh, maybe get your thinking as well. Uh, for last half, I mean, for the, again, again, we've been running education for half a year now. Getting too cold. <laughs> Air conditioning thing, no. <laughs> Um, and, 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 I, and I made um, epic, epic connections, a lot of connections. Just, just from doing EduCamp half a year, I made so many connections. <clears throat> and, and, and just from those connections, there's just been, a, just been a backlog of projects in the pipeline. I mean, even, to, even tonight, uh, Mark Lee has brought three projects onto the, on, 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 onto the forefront, you know. Uh, and, and, and these projects need help. So, yeah, you get a reading that reading. Um, I actually would like to wind up EduCamp. Not get rid of it, but I need to rethink what to do with it. Um, and, I, and I would like to invite all of you here to think with me or to help contribute to me if you're interested in this journey of 
what exactly are we trying to do with education? Um, and you know, the, the time spent and stuff, <coughs> I need to refocus back on some of these projects that has already germinated and it's time to take action. I mean, I, 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 it's just like I share with you some later on. Um, I've got a fourth child on the way. <laughs> I just want to spend a bit more time there. Uh, either this month or early next month. And outreach issues. You guys don't need to be preached to about the importance of education. You guys don't need to be. You know, I, I, I've been trying to get uh, speakers to you know, show your critical thinking, uh, show you how to think outside the box, show you all the, you know, all the different sides of various uh, uh, things about education. But, but the honest truth is that the feedback is that you, you guys, are, it's, it's like you watching that kind of person and you're just nodding your head. That's, that's the truth. That's the truth. You guys don't, it's, it's, it's come to a point where I really like, oh my god, we, we have, it feels like we're just preaching to the choir already. You know? And, and, the, and the webcam format um, is not as. Um, Catalytic as it should be. So I need to rethink um, the Educam model. I mean, this, the talks are still okay and stuff, but the outreach issues is a bit of a challenge. You know, um, who are we trying to get the message out to? You know, who are the people who really, really needs to watch that Ken Robinson video and say, "Oh my God, I can't be pushing my kids to do something they don't want to do. I can't be, you know, um, forcing my kids to be who, what, 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 what they're not." Or potentially even a parent watching that video and say, "Oh my God, I need my kids back in school." Because if you have been to some of these uh, really poverty stricken, hit, uh, high density government subsidized flats, you basically have a drug out parents, um, glue sitting kids, um, and, and for them it's not even about looking for their passion. For them it's no passion. You know, we sometimes think that, oh, you know, we're, uh, we're pushing our kids, Tiger Mom, pushing the kids too hard. You've never seen real education problem when it's like, there's no pushing at all. <laughs> You know, for them, for them to wake up, I go to school, teacher coming out, bring pen knife to school, you know, we're extorting money, you know, uh, to buy glue to sniff. You know, and, and then they are gonna go through the education system, they're gonna get their, they come out and they, 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 they're directionless. Don't even start talking about, hey, you can be whatever you want to be, right? <clears throat> so for me, that's a visualization of problem, and, and, and I'm, th I'm thinking of winding up EduCamp in its current form. Um, and, and, and focus on that. Webcam is fine. Uh, in case you, if, if, if you don't know webcam, the format works for webcam uh, very well. well. Uh, Educam a bit weird lah. <laughs> Educam is a bit weird. <laughs> um, so onwards, um, this is what I'm proposing. Um, we'll just have monthly casual meetups. Um, I will no longer, I will no longer try and bring speakers to speak to to, to you all, but. I will be proactively looking for interesting people to hang out with uh, in, in more, some, more like this, but with no definite topics and stuff and so on and so forth. Just come and then uh, hopefully, hopefully you all have your little, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe just do an icebreaker of some sort and then you just break out and then, and then have some snacks and just chill out or maybe watch a movie and stuff like that. So more casual uh, meetups. <clears throat> uh, as and when I, I meet people uh, who are interested to conduct workshops, who have more focused out of events, uh, workshop type things. Uh, like today was supposed to be uh, Dia Diana. Remember Diana? She was here. Like, she was supposed to come and do a, a, a short workshop on discovery. Very nice lady. Um, she she's actually paid to do this workshop. She she volunteered to do it for free for for, for Um And normally the workshop runs for like one hour, two hours. And I said, okay, to condense to twenty minutes. Then she got a flu. <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe I'll do more like that. You know. One, one, one sort of a workshop which are like as and when somebody volunteers to give. So, so I think that there's a workshop in the pipeline of critical thinking. Maybe you might be interested to organize something like that, uh, get a small crowd going. Uh, we'll help with the promotion and stuff because we, 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 can, we can reach out very easily with the home. Um, and the project I spoke about. Um, so, those who are really regular edu campers, uh, tired of bitching and whining about the education system and, and just have ideas. Uh, and then we shared it, and then, oh, that's a great idea. We probably should, should, should JV together and, and do something together. Um, so a small group of us, really dedicated people, have formed something called a Brain Trust. And uh, I, I would totally like, would like to invite and welcome if anybody are really dedicated and are really interested to find out more. Um, 
Uh, we can we, you know to join the brain trust to talk about project. I mean, this are this the brain trust group is uh, individuals who want to do something for the education uh, system to tackle that real world problem. How can hell? How the hell can we get the inclusive kid off the street and and start realizing that you know education is important and that's and that's why Marx project is very very interesting. BM the translation part. Um, we gotta start thinking more like this, more holistically. Because, like, you know, like I said, the, the middle income and higher income, they don't need our help. You know, it's really the, the, the bottom. And Teach from Malaysia is taking a stab at it. Um, you may criticize their methodology a bit. Uh, maybe you maybe want to form a uh, counter Teach from Malaysia, which is less restrictive. Uh, how many of you are aware of Teach from Malaysia program? So, you know that, uh, how many of you think that you would have qualified for the Teach from Malaysia program? I wouldn't because A is that uh, um, the, the entrance requirement for the, the degree, you must have a degree and you must commit two years, right? <clears throat> um, the, for me, the fundamental issue with that is that if I am passionate about my work and my profession and my career, and if I'm in a particular career where it's like technology based, giving up two years of that, you might as well ask me to commit suicide and don't, don't work technology after that, <laughs> you know? Um, and I believe that is why a lot of the technology people are not joining the Teach from Malaysia program because, dude, you know, um, or design, for example, or something. I'm, I really love my job and I want to teach but not give up my job for two years. Because, like, like I said, it's a key to a professional suicide to, to lose that two years. All right? Um, but, like I said, a lot of the brain trust people, they are passionate about teaching and helping and uh, working with schools, trying to work with schools to find out some sort of uh, industrial. Again, I think you know, intervention or whatever, industrial partnership programs with school, just to bring just to bring real world um, to the existing school system. But again, um, super easy to do. Honestly, I mean, this, these are these are the low hanging low hanging fruit projects. What I mean by that is like just just bringing career exposure to the schools and just letting letting the ch the, the students and children know about hey, there are all these other careers out there right now, and here are the career here are the different branching career paths. Uh, and then if you want to find out more. Add me on Facebook, I'll, I'll share with you more resources. I mean, we can do that today. You know, I can connect you to a rocket scientist in Florida. If you're really passionate about rockets, you know, being a rocket scientist, and you can actually Facebook message them and then ask them, like, you know, I want to be a rocket scientist. What's the fastest way for me to become a rocket scientist? I mean, who was it? A self taught law. It can be done. Five years ago, I don't even talk about that. You know? uh, self taught drawing, self -taught, this is possible now, you know? And, 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 and like I said, the challenge is not about telling those people who have the internet, who have realized the potential of the internet. The challenge is how to get that to those who don't even, you know, uh, uh, get the internet. And hopefully we are coming towards organizing one EDUCAM conference next year. But basically it's like what, what we do, get speakers, um, and then maybe do it as a you know, one day or two day conference uh, where I get uh, 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 educators of all, all the speakers that we that we hung out and met up with over the casual meetups, you know, slowly assembling them and then finding out when uh, when are all of you free and in KL at the same time, and then we'll throw a, a educam conference and then just uh, get it all filmed. Still, I, I think the I think the getting it on YouTube is still a very important important aspect of the thing. <laughs> but what I want to do next year or, or even from, from from now on is is more of this to build towards this. Um, so, so, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, you are historically enough going to be the last batch of the old format of EduCamp. Uh, and I would like to get your input and feedback or do you think it's a crazy stupid idea or you like how it is right now and stuff or so on so on. Or it's getting late and you can go back and sleep. Yeah. No, uh, I'm, I've been, I'm from MMU. What's up? Yeah, so I, 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 I have been trying to get uh, my juniors, juniors, which I have no connection, to actually catch us up. Because we have a team here from graduates, mm -hmm. but no longer in I, some of us no longer in IT, but we actually would like to go back and contribute. But even that itself is an issue. No, go back to MAU to contribute. Yeah, I go back to MAU to tell the students, hey, you know, life outside is not what you read in the books. But um, 
But I think this idea, you could actually use it, you know, approach to alumni. There are a lot of university alumni. They have committees, they have the powers. Uh, approach those who, who would like to do. I am not an MMU alumni, I'm just that, just for the sake of that club. Hmm. Uh, right? um, but it is a, a channel you can go through because alumni, I believe, quite certain unis alumni are quite influential in their own universities. So maybe you could get that patch up, you know, get that connection through. Hmm. So to, to get that connection started so that, you know, just bring a few speakers down to tell the students, hey, start thinking out of the box. Hmm. The world is not what you read in the book. Whatever you read here, it's just going to help you to survive. It's hmm. not going to help you to live. It's not going to change the world. Hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah, so that's one, of, actually that's one of the projects that's going to be happening. It is. I'm bringing, I'm bringing profes industry professionals to invade the uh, to invade colleges and universities at MMU and so that, that's happening. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are actually going to be talking to tailors. Uh, MMU is one. Uh, the MMU and the cyber... I'm not good. Uh, you want a cyber contact, I can get you. I got cyber contact already as well. Oh. Uh, Taylor is very, very keen. Uh, KD, you're not so keen, but eventually okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but government is a bit harder. Lah. That's the usual. Sure. <laughs> that, that's why they're all here. <laughs> <laughs> the terrorist group. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks for sharing, sharing that. You're, you're from MMU. Blacker. Oh, uh, they, they, they could have they could have used a rice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So thoughts. I think I really like the new idea. It's more like action based, or project based, um, new structure of education. So I think just on top of everything you said, um, like the brain trust projects, if we can get like an up, like a monthly update for education, kind of in yeah. a way, like education can kind of keep mm. those who believe in the projects accountable to what they're doing and have progress. Um, in those projects and also people's like you contribute their thoughts or their context mm. or whatever. Um, and maybe if like part of like the end of EduCamp could be kind of breakout sessions. So mm. anyone new comes to EduCamp they can go to learn about the progress of like that project and what they can do to help in one other breakout meetings or yeah. month. Yeah, so that's um, I'm actually very committed to the meetups because the funny thing is that in last half year of EduCamp, um, a lot of the new connections that I made were not actually in this event. It was somebody came here and then told somebody who I need to meet, but that somebody cannot come for the EduCamp because of time and the day. And then they said, oh, come for lunch, and then that led to another connection. Then I was like, actually, the Academy Talks is, I can meet even more people. Also. Yeah. So I'd rather just continue doing that instead. Yeah. So I'd rather be committed to it. Because I think, I think the the casual meetup and the interaction will be more valuable because we're all here for the same reason already, right? You know, uh, almost to the point where the speaker sometimes the people just come to want to connect and talk, and the speakers is actually taking up the time for. Well, the speakers are great, like I said. Um, we still continue filming the things, but like I said, there's no point preaching to you know what you're already all nodding your head and agree. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if there was like maybe one speaker, like it open and you can open with the speaker or something and if you selected if people came to you and said like, I want to put that on this mm. value because of XYZ and you were like, Well I'll do it next time or you could yeah, yeah. like one person. So it's it, more it, casual, it's, it's very, very casual, so it's like you know, um, on the on the <coughs> educam group we just basically say like if somebody wants to give a talk or something and if enough people say, Yeah, you know, uh, let's have a talk and we'll just do it more more I'd rather have it more like that than then yeah. it's a, it takes a bit of a burden for me to try to find uh, a, a, a really good speakers and come and inspire you all. But honestly, it's, like, it's come to a point where it's like, this, this, this gang of terrorists don't need inspiring. You know, like Leah is like, coming all the time, it's like, I don't need to inspire her that she needs to do something about changing the education program. She's like, just, just point it out, step on them. You know? <laughs> um, so I rather, I rather change every kind to be more action oriented. Um, a place for us to uh, talk about the projects, uh, whether it's germination projects. Like I, I think I can easily spend a few hours talking to Mark about how we can pivot calm.net and what he's already done so far. I mean, you know, let, 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 let's, let, let's make it hard work of getting all those coordinates in and the 222 Twitter accounts in, in a very centralized way. There's, there, there, there's, there's something there, you know. Yeah. Um, Mark is a very interesting man because 
he thinks almost like 10 steps ahead of where the puck could probably, probably be, but he needs help to get the in-between parts. <laughs> and, 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 and I would like to help out with that, you know, uh, and, and see what happens. But, but I have to watch out for what's in front of me sometimes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're just looking way ahead, right? <laughs> the reason I mentioned that is because I was in JV. Um, well, I, I, I'm from JV, right? So it was really dark at night. <laughs> and um, I had my... I have my Android phone. And it's actually it's a flashlight application. <laughs> and anyway, it has a flashlight application. So, oh, I'm high tech, right? Flashlight application. I <coughs> a USB flashlight too. <laughs> high tech, you know? Right? It's JB dark. Oh, high tech. Android thingy that has that has flashing suck it up. That's like a. He doesn't want to be hit by a car. So he right. flash. Flashing. So like a flashlight, right? I'm ready, set. I walk right into a wrong gun. Serious. I actually got a scarf to bend for him. <laughs> and I was like, okay, being a tech guy, the first thing I was saying to myself was, I'm right back. Is my laptop okay? No, when you're bleeding. Yeah, I'm bleeding. You know, I was like, do I have my laptop? I, said, so I have my laptop, the question is whether it's okay. So I was all ready to be high tech, right? You know, Android phone, flashlight, you know, the onside thingy. This one, right? Oh, God. That was like one of those days, like, I was laughing to myself after that because like I'm such an idiot, <laughs> basically. Thinking so far ahead that I missed the immediate problem right in front. Painful but uh, interesting experience. Oh, you, remember, you remember your trip? <laughs> oh, that's a JD, that's my hometown. <laughs> that long gun is very vicious. Um, yeah, so, yes? So if I can suggest something, yes. it seems like um, it would be helpful, for example, to have something like a a network, like a word press maybe, of the people that you have met so far. Like, I, like I, I really like, you know, like maybe knowing um, this guy here, and Mr. you know, Mark, um, you know, with all these <laughs> things that you guys are doing. Yep. But unless I'm physically here, I yep. wouldn't know that, you know, there are these kind of individuals. Oh yeah, and if, yeah I was quite surprised as well. All the silo, all the silo initiatives going on. Yeah, it's like, that, that's, that's a very good I, idea. I think that it's very, um, it's it will be helpful yep. to get them, you know, like you know, up on WordPress, you know, like you know, briefly, like, hey, this this guy, what he's doing, you know, like if you're interested in helping him out on this yep. project, you know, contact them, you know, so that you know, and people can go to them, and you know, they don't, yeah, that, that I feel that that will get a lot of action going. Mm. So we we'll get a database of people, and it, and it's not only with you, you know, yep. it's not like all the information. Oh, it's with me, all connection. Everyone can start forming their own individual connections. The, the challenge of that sometimes is that ideas are very delicate things. You know what I mean? Okay. I, ideas are very, very delicate things. Um, not so much about NDA or whatever it is, okay. but um, <clears throat> some of the ideas needs to be still in like slowly nurturing phase, you know? And, and, and you should only share it with somebody who you really feel a connection with okay. to contribute back and then hopefully bring it out to a, to a larger phase. So, Quite a number of the ideas uh, could run the risk of the moment you you you, you bring bring it out there, the criticism start happening and stuff. You can put a damper to people who want to fire things up. But but I understand the 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 the, the, the benefit of listing those which are already like maybe past early stage and things are starting to roll and they need help already. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, that, that 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 be something to think about for the EduCamp website maybe. Um, but as it is right now, um, on the Edicam Facebook group, people are already encouraged to put their projects there and talk about it and have you know have discussions and stuff. And basically, anybody who needs help will just go to the Facebook group and say, "I'm working on this project." No, no, no. If you need help, Facebook me. Uh, it's a bit more transient, which I think some people prefer it that way. Uh, transient means that at this point in time, I need help. It shows up. Who sees it? Who sees it? Lah. You know. And over time, it just gets buried uh, uh, down there. And, and, and then the next time when they have something else to report, then they report it there, rather than having it for posterity on, on the WordPress site. Um, the problem with the for posterity and WordPress site is that I announce a project, I put it on WordPress, and this is, this is very common for a lot of scum work type projects. The moment I announce that it's going to be done, or I, I announce that I'm, I'm going to work on this and do this, um, some of this, the nature of some of these projects, education reform, education change, start a school, when you have that blog post or whatever it is, and a week goes on, two weeks goes on, a month goes on, you're constantly reminded that nothing's happened, nothing's happened, nothing's happened. And you basically end up feeling like 
depressed about it. <laughs> you actually end up feeling unenergized about it. You're like, oh, this 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 just collecting cobwebs. That's why that's why I find a lot of the people who are actually getting this stuff done, they don't want to write it up. They want to just keep it very personal, share with a few close people, uh, and, and and don't get reminded that this idea was three years old. And they tend to end up finally getting it out of the way. Uh, one project I share with you all. Have you heard of the Green School Bali? I don't know how old they are already, what, five, five years? They're yeah, five years. Uh, when they first started, uh, a friend of mine uh, studied them and wanted to do the same thing for Selangor. <clears throat> and uh, it's not easy. You're trying to get land, you're trying to get the funding, you're trying to get the support, and trying to get the, the teachers and whatever it is to, to, to buy in on the idea and support your thing. <clears throat> uh, and it was easily a four year side project. And, 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 and sometimes for months you don't get you don't get the progress that you want. And I I I I, 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 see, I really believe that if he has put it somewhere and he's looked at it, he'll just get so because you'll be reminded that nothing is moving. And you just get so disillusioned. But you just keep it, you know, uh, on your back burner, just always looking out for opportunities. The moment you see an opportunity, you okay, you listen down, listen down, you know. And then the, when, the, when the time comes to act, when you you know you get the op the, the time and op the, the the opportunity just right, suddenly you call it in together, then things happen. So that's the challenge that we need to be careful about as well, with regards to listing these sort of ideas and stuff. No, I think maybe you can tweak Vienna's idea yeah. a little bit because I understand your concern about mm. how ideas might be, um, <coughs> you know. Yeah. But the thing is. Uh, maybe you could slim it down a bit to more mm. of a person profile mm. of what you want to do for education. Because what you cannot be, uh, what you cannot replace from this kind of session is that that through through this session, through the ice breaking session, I know what you're passionate in, yeah. I know what you're interested in, what your skill sets, what you are, you can do and what you can't do. Best you, you can't ask somebody who's not in programming or website design to design a website for you and mm. do something, right? So. Uh, more of the time is the person who has the idea who is piecing the pieces together, getting the correct map up to build the project, right? Mm. So not necessarily they have to put the whole project up. Maybe as people we can put our personal profile, it's like a Facebook thing, it's like Facebook started with the social network thing, yeah, yeah. single or not single thing. Yeah, now this one is like I'm interested in education, but what are my skill sets? What I'm interested in, I said I if you want to start an education business, you contact me. If you want to work corporate programming skills, if you want activists or government, whatever that what are you interested in? What your skill set? Then a person with an idea will know who to connect the dots and who to call together for yeah. a monthly casual meetup yeah, for that yeah, specific yeah. project. Then I think that is a more close. Um, basically, we need to use the technology of the platform to accelerate the relationship building. Yeah, I would think maybe a uh, well, if it will help, if, if, will help. If, if it will immediately help if people stop using Hello Kitty as their profile picture. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, reason I, I saw like just want to add this out because uh, I have been organizing uh, a couple of uh, mastermind groups myself, and I think um, Educap may have started to sort of like move into that kind of format instead. Mm. Uh, in a way, because why I think that it may start to move into more of mastermind. Uh, for, for those who didn't know, mastermind is it's actually it's a close group of individuals. Uh, they may come from different backgrounds, but it's like the mo most concern is that they meet regularly at a like a regular at one venue, and we talk about our goals and we just help each other accountable for their own uh, progress essentially. So, the uh, key ingredient of making something to work, uh, something like a mastermind group to work, is not the chemistry alone, but rather rather is the active engagement. As in, it's like you need to make sure that everybody is still is like. Although we may work on different projects, but we saw like, I need to keep ourselves each other engaged in some way to sort like just check in with them. Oh, how's your progress? It's not to say that this is the goal, this is the deadline. Why are you not uh, <laughs> achieving that that goal like, right now? But rather, it's more like trying to look because it's like we know because it's like uh, in terms of education and things like that, it's like it takes a very long time span and everything. So it's like you need you, you saw like you just need to check in with them how to know how they feel. It's like how they feel, what kind of obstacles they're going through and trying to share the pain as, as we go yeah. on and inevitably it's like we all that we may sort of like just have some sort of connections that spring up to mind because it's like a lot of times it's like we know that everybody has particular skills, we all know that uh, people have particular resources but sometimes it's like due to trust issues we may not sort of like 
deal out all the cards like we're just right in front. Sometimes it's like you need some sort so that's where the an active engagement needs to go on where it's like the trust needs to be slowly built and it's mm. like then it's like, oh I know that you're doing this, then I see I see your progress to this point, that I'm able to trust you with like particular connections or particular resources that I'm able to contribute in. And that's not something that you can solve in a technological way where it's really uh, require a lot of trust and a lot of engagement being in is like that means that it's constantly about communication like make sure that it's like you need a place to sort of like just keep track of what each other done it's not it's yeah. 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 It's, yeah. yeah it's like it keep track of the project itself or uh, like it's, and, and it's like usually as a person and even I myself like, I don't really keep journals it's like I keep journals but it's like usually my journals are to do to do this but it's like <laughs> You, you can't really track progress on your own. You have need to be somebody else to actually act as your scribe to know to actually drop it's like from their perspective what have you done actually that's the kind of uh, things that actually drive you further because that like, this gives you a third person perspective in terms of the progress of the project, especially in EduCamp where it's not like one big over all project, it's like a cluster of different projects interacting with each other in some way or the other because it's like <coughs> I guess we, we are able to it's like it's it's, it's good that every, everybody's on the same boat is that would be good but it's like more often than not we are all more like interested in some aspects than the other like in my case I am more into like creating little stuff and just leave it there so and see how it rolls and there are some people who likes to sort of like roll with it it's like oh something's there let's just roll with it like a dark beetle to just really snowball it it's like you have, it's like this and these kind of things won't it's like you won't know these kind of uh, personality traits and everything without a really constant uh, engagement going on that's what the casual meetup is at mm. and it's like and so it's like active engagement is one then the second part would definitely be accountability that means that if we are no, you are on a project, we are okay if you are slow, but we are not okay if you plateau or you fall like just fall off the cliff. So it's like that's the component. It's like we, we, at least we know that we, as a, at least for myself, I know how hard projects can go in terms of where emotionally sometimes it's like when you don't get progress, sometimes you just feel so drained. So it's like we know that you, you don't expect you to sort of like grow like exponentially, but at least we sort of like need to sort of like keep track where you are and if you, if you think that it's like that we need to sort of like give you reinforcement that's the time when you sort of like have reinforcements going on. Uh, yeah I think I, I think if there's if there's anything I think that's my experience in organizing uh, with the, this what I observe in mastermind groups essentially. So to practice what we preach I will open the floor again one more time um, to let you all uh, share maybe there's a project that you're germinating or maybe there's a project you're already uh, working on that needs help what kind of help uh, would you probably might like to you know need whether it's just somebody to bounce ideas off with uh, with regards to uh, an education context or an education uh, angle to it anybody I mean already Mark has already shared his uh, uh, Khan Academy for BM uh, anybody would like to I mean, it doesn't have to be a project, but rather it could be just something as small as oh, I just probably want to help my sister to yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah some, even something as simple as that. Sometimes it's like we are not comfortable in opening up, even as the small things of like mm. this. And how would you be able to ask for help if you are not able to ask for help for small things like yes. this? Actually, that, at least that's my point of view. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe can I, can I say something uh, pretty much in the journey? I think uh, we need to, uh, the ideas that we have, uh, we can't be emotionally attached to them. Uh, yes, they are our ideas, and, uh, but trust me, there's a six, six old billion people out there. Tell us what you think of, someone has thought of it. And, um, and the thing is, uh, by the benchmark, if our ideas are not good enough, uh, People won't find the time to criticize it, or people won't time to find the time to even copy it. I mean, if you think about it in Malaysian context, how do you know that an artist has actually made it? Uh, a musical artist made it. It's actually when you see see them be pirated on the social <laughs> media. I mean, then you know that you made it. You know, you're worth it enough to learn. And I think uh, we need to detach ourselves away from the idea. Uh, chances are, and myself included, I have ideas that are eight years old, nine years old. 
uh, the chances of it coming to fruition, I mean, uh, probably not lah. Uh, but if you bring it to a group such as this, uh, if and uh, be a bit less pers, uh, be a bit less attached to our ideas, uh, give to someone who has the time, who has the expertise, who who will take it and run. You know, else uh, if we grab it and you know we hold on to it and say no, 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 this is my idea. I'll do it someday. I'll do it someday. I'll do it someday. Um, I think the chances of actually it coming to frustration uh, probably won't happen. Uh, and uh, the whole the whole thing is that uh, why not just release it? And you know, if someone takes your idea, it makes a great thing out of it. Then good, you can join the other person and say, hey, let me help you instead. It doesn't have to be our baby or our child that our thing. Uh, and and I think if we uh, we are we are like-minded people, such uh, we don't have we don't really have to be afraid of uh, uh, criticism to start because more often than not it should be constructive criticism that will come away and uh, we're here to help each other out. So uh, perhaps my encouragement for us is uh, not to try to uh, you know this is mine you know I'm okay with it and I'm not gonna tell others that type of thing uh, yeah possibly so don't. I don't think we have trouble with that in this community at all. One is execution is hard, second thing is that we do fear of rejection. And uh, probably, as I said, it's like sometimes it's like, it's not, it's like, probably what we need is just, as I said, it's like, like Mark said, it's like all we need is actually probably a small safe playground where you can sort of like just have a safe environment where you can just sort of like throw ideas or probably just let things bounce around and see what goes. I mean, because it's like even when camp doesn't start, like it doesn't start big at me, it's just like five people in the first one and you think that oh it's probably like just probably just fun enough for you to do the second one, just do the second one. If it doesn't work out then it's like by all means it's like but sometimes you just don't know because like I got into webcam almost like ten months after webcam was uh, established in the first place and my involvement only started at first it's just like listening to the organizing community and everything. And the actual work actually started when it's like there was a speaker whom I held really high respect of was speaking and I just took out my iPod and just recorded the whole talk and just shared it out. Mm. And pretty much everything snowballed for me. And it's like to me it's like, oh I think it's like it's like find, find value in like more speakers who have more like interesting perspective. It's like it's like I got on doing it until to a point where it's like we have somebody to stuff. So that, that, it's like that, that ties into my talk is actually is that a lot of things a, a, a lot of times it's like the, the journey wasn't that straightforward a lot of times it's just like random small little <coughs> experiments and interests or hobbies that you sort of pick up and eventually some, at some point you sort of like farm some sort of connection then it breeds to a bigger like cell essentially mm -hmm. and something bigger and something bigger so, so that's exactly what um, <coughs> you would like to pivot etiquette to be a particle accelerator of sort you know and 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 and, and, and we'll throw up ideas out there and then see what sticks or see you know maybe an idea makes you interested enough or maybe not immediately like what Talat used to uh, his last talk is like I'm gonna just throw some ideas out there in a in a non non sequential fragmented way uh, maybe it won't hit you right now but you know uh, tonight you go back sleep on it tomorrow morning you're in the toilet in your frozen throne then you think about it more like oh hey it's got something there yes good stuff um. I'll, I'll, I'll tell I'll, I'll try to be free finish before midnight <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, yeah, yeah. Two hours. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you what I how I see uh, you can brain trust and so mm. on from, from my from my perspective <clears throat> uh, I've been to every one of the, the meetings uh, since the first one today is the ninth. Oh, you give me count. I must count. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have pictures of every single one of them. Like a boss. Um, so now, the, the thing about it is that to me, okay, the people who come here are different types of people. More or less similar objective or concerns. We're all concerned about education. We have our own experiences, our own lives, our own spheres of influence. Some of us are lawyers, some of us, <laughs> you know, many of us are technologists and so on. Um, you see, and I believe that most of most most of us are kind of movers and shakers. You you have initiative, otherwise you wouldn't be here. You probably uh, at the top or near the top of your craft, uh, <coughs> wherever you are. Okay, 
uh, like Wuhan says, you probably don't need motivation. But I think all of us need encouragement. We feel alone in the spaces where we are. We want to see that other people are like us. We're probably not going to bump into them, you know, unless we come to work who have every can. But we know that somewhere, this fella, that fella. So the value of a direct tree of sorts is actually, to me, a very good idea. Yeah. To say, hey, this guy, I know him. I met him in Educan. He's doing a great job there, right? And I'm encouraged. I may or may not need help. Needing the help, expertise, and so on. Look, I mean, I run four or five companies. I can hire people if I want to get things done. One thing is I don't have enough money. So, you know, I might get, try to get Wuhan to give me a million or two. You know, these are the things that, that may be are the, the crux of the matter, right? For, 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 for things like that. But you see, I already know what I'm doing. I already know what I want to do. All right? I want to target the teachers. 400 plus thousand of them. Right? Most of them, uh, you know, I'm generalizing, but looking at the state of our education system, uh, do not, are not worthy of the title of teacher, right? Attitude sucks, right? Don't want to learn, don't want to be role models for their kids, right? I want to help to change that. So my question is, how do I, how in the world do I do that? Where do I start? So I start with our schools and our teachers, the things that I'm doing now, <coughs> commercially. And then ideas are, well, yes, ideas are plenty. In fact, I get more ideas from the internet than I do here, usually in a day, rather than coming here. You know, things have changed. Like Wuhan says, we, we, we're, not, we're not under the coconut shell. We, we know what things are. Our problem is that we are kind of like stuck in the mud. You know, I'm doing the thing day after day, and like he says, you put up on the bill, on the, on the post, on the, on the whiteboard, yeah, hey, this not moving, that not moving. You know, you feel you're letting yourself down. But when you see other people, okay, Sometimes it's a bit of schadenfreude. Uh, when you see other people, you know, mess up, then you say, hey, I'm not so bad at all. <laughs> um, and other times you say, hey, this guy is, you know, he's, he's not as good looking as I am, but he does more successful oh, than I do. Then, you know, then he's like, oh no, you know, I'm, I'm pushed to do some, something better. So uh, I know a lot of, uh, not a lot, I know a number of teachers who are in for example, I know one district in Johor, okay, that has only one teacher who is like-minded, who wants to improve things. The whole, the rest of them, the whole district, okay, <laughs> they don't want anything. They couldn't care less about changes or whatever it is. All right, they're going the way of the dinosaur and the dodo bird, and they couldn't care less. But we want to change that. Now, how do you change that? If you don't, if we don't encourage a teacher, if we don't find more and more teachers and tell them, hey, you're not alone. And then maybe use the technology. Get a platform up where teachers like that can come. Because we can't meet physically. It's not possible. In the same way that we do e-learning by telling people <laughs> teachers cannot teach one-on-one. -on -one. Machines can teach one-on-one -on -one effectively. Only in certain things, of course, not everything. Right? Human teachers. So let the the machine do what the machine does, the teacher do what the teacher does best. And these are the things that we, we are trying to do. Now, we are impacting some 20, 30, 40, 50,000 students a year in my business alone. All right? It's like more than that. 100, 150, 200,000. Yeah. Still, I find it's not enough. I, 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 I want to do more and more. But that's my lot, okay? Probably none of you will come across into my area of, of, of work because I haven't seen most of you. Right? <laughs> and probably, you know, you'll be on your way doing other things and so on. But I would like to know that there are all these ninjas all over the place, you know, having the same kind of mindset that as I do, same attitude, getting people, getting kids, young kids, those who don't have it. So for example, some of the approaches that, that I feel there's no point going to school and talking to students. I'm, I'm sorry. University is a different story. I don't know much about the university scene. But students, you can talk until you're blue in the face about what's outside the world. They couldn't be bothered. All right? How do I know? My two kids are like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, 
<laughs> you know, I, I told them until they were Form 5. Then Form 5, SPM is the biggest thing in this whole world. You mess that up, you screw up your life. Right? They wouldn't listen. Right? At 17 years old, I had to whack my daughter. Basically, don't tell her. And then the surprising thing was, my wife joined me and went to her as well. <laughs> and after that, both of us ended up crying. Still, she wouldn't listen. But immediately after SPM, she changed. All by herself. I don't know how, I don't know. Same thing with my boy, right? During the time, you have to, you know, you probably have to, I don't know, strangle them. They still won't. No. So in school, they are not, they don't care. What's relevant to them is school, home, their friends. Not necessarily in that order. Right? <laughs> the gadgets. That's all they're concerned about. They don't care about, you can tell them you're, you're blue in your face. So what we do is, all right, we say, okay, right, now they're in school. So they can't escape. <laughs> Number two, what do we do with them? How do we deal with them? What do they need? One of the reasons why kids come out, all right, the haves, you look at it, you think about it carefully, the haves, those who know technology, all of you, for example, most of you, I would say all of you, without exception, fairly, fairly strong in language. Whatever language, doesn't matter. Most likely bilingual, at least. Right? What well, the kids who are not strong in their studies and so on are usually poor in their language, usually. So for us, our strategy is not just secondary school, we did about seven, last seven, eight years. The last two or three years, we start to move downwards to the primary school and saying, look, start to have programs for them. Our dream is that every kid in Malaysia, by the time they reach standard six, are super proficient in at least three languages. Because they can. And because it will benefit them in the long run. Because I'm not afraid that they don't have technology now. They will have the technology when they grow up. Like Wuhan says, why do we worry? All of them will not be able to live without the smartphone. <laughs> they can't. They're already demanding it at age seven. <laughs> Mommy, my smartphone, I don't eat my food. You know? So these are the things that we, that we look at. What do they need? Equip them. What do they need? They need language. Language not just in terms of English and Malay. But math. like uh, Ricard is saying, math. math, thinking skills. And these are the things that we need to get to them. Now, how do we get to them? The parents and the teachers. My concern is more with teachers. Why? Because I was a former teacher and I failed. <laughs> right? So I want to try to make sure other people don't do the same. And I see a lot of people failing, a lot of teachers failing in the classroom. But the parents, we would love to reach the parents. Most parents I meet, I have to smack them. <laughs> I know a lot of people here. Yeah. <laughs> right? Why? Because all they think about is keeping up with the Joneses. Alright? They have that, they, you know, my kid must have this. Alright? My their kid does that, my kid must do this. They are ferried around all over town. I must also ferry my kid all over town. They wear this and you know, this they, they're concerned with these kind of things. They're concerned with, oh, exam must get seven A's and so on. They, these are the things that that, you know, to me, I have very little patience with the teachers, with, with, the, with the parents in that respect. And I, and I find that, you know, the parents bring the teachers, the teachers bring the parents, both are at fault. You, you have to be responsible. I was just sharing with, with Leah. You know, that guy in Colorado who, who, who killed so many people, right? I, and then you think of it, you know, the guy in all, you know, you know, check, 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 you know, degree, yes, postgrad, you know, and so on. He aced all his exams and so on. <coughs> nice boy, you know, quite as well. <laughs> <laughs> all the things. And what does he end up doing? Buy 6,000 rounds of ammunition and shoot people to death, to, you know, dead. How? Why? Right? And I think, do the parents have a role? I think they do. Right? And I think parents shouldn't have kids unless they're ready to bring those kids up responsibly. Teachers as well. Don't teach unless you really have the heart to do it. And things like that. And all are equipped to do. So these are the things that, that to me matter. And I'm, I'm doing the stuff that I can do. Uh, sometimes when I come, I, 
I don't really know how many of you, you know, you, you all look so young. <laughs> uh, I, I'm kind of like in a, in a different world. And then, you know, and then sometimes when you all talk, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the old days when you were playing with marbles, you probably have seen some of them, these things before. Um, so, you know, you're in a different world, this is kind of your world. But it would be a good idea to, 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 be, you know, to be brave and say, look, if EduCam doesn't work in this way, then go back. We have to go back to what are our objectives? Is it basically to get as more, more people coming, inspire them, or equip them, or help them, or get everybody to contribute ideas? What is it that we want to do? Then we base the things, uh, our activities on the things that we really, really want to achieve and say, okay, I want to say, um, like for me, I would like to build, let's say, a website. Uh, we did this uh, with UN recently. You just completed a, 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 a web application to get teachers together to talk about how to improve their lessons. They're doing a research project on this. I would like to, and the first thing all of them said was, like, teachers are not going to use it. <laughs> yeah, they won't want to. Then what we said was, never mind. We find the teachers who want to use this. It could be two of them, it could be five of them, it could be ten of them. If we can get it up to 20, 50, 100 of them, then all those 100 teachers will feel that they are not alone. Right? And then we build on one. And this is the way that technology can do. Physically, we can't. All right? My friends, one is in Johor, the other one is in Penang, and so on. How often do I see them? How often do I talk to them? It's just not practical. But with this kind of technology, we can we can bring it. so this I, these ideas of not just passing ships passing in the night kind of thing, but once we connect and we say hey you know right hey I know what you're like okay I may not meet you too often but I know what he's doing and you know updates will help okay this fellow is doing great and so on this fellow is shaking that part of the world this person is shaking up the teacher this person is shaking up the parents and I would certainly like to shake the hand of that person. We shake up the parents. <laughs> right? So these are the things that, 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 that concern me. And I think we can go on with a lot of the, the you know and think about workshops to me will be great. Interesting people to come and say, I mean like we all always look up to people who are very, you know, who, who excel in their fields. Right? Even you know somebody comes up. Mm -hmm. Credentials alone, wow. right? Or somebody who has had a great track record, you know, or an extremely uh, good product, or a brain child that's that's come up and it's like a million bucks worth at least two million bucks worth. These are the people we are inspired by, and I think we should still have them. But mm. like you say, I agree. Get it so that it's relevant. Mm. But in the end, I think we still have to go back to. What are we trying to achieve that, that we can achieve? All right? Uh, maybe it's not building a school together. I mean, how, how would that work? I, mean, <laughs> right? I already have four or five companies. I don't need to work, I need to run another, right? Um, I just met BK Gunn yeah. uh, at Taylor's Education. They are also starting a dozen new schools. Yeah. Uh, very progressive and so on and so forth. They try to. Um, they pitched it to the minute MOE because mm -hmm. they, they actually want to make the schools this new, new modern schools accessible as in like not expensive mm -hmm. you know and obviously the ministry gave them cold co co water yeah. you know and then the, but then they say okay never mind we'll go ahead doing it anyway because um, because the market is there the well to basically basically you have the expensive international schools you have expensive private schools and you have public ed education there's a huge gap for the free public and the international school, the price points. And that's what Taylor wants to do. They want to create a lot of price points. <coughs> you know? That's that's how they that, that, that's how they have to tackle 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 the education thing. And and they <coughs> and they've got the resources and they've got a very good reputation. Yep. And I'm very sure if they if they put their hand to it, they're going to yep. succeed. So so, they, so now I know, hey, Taylor's are going to do mm. a great. Now if I need to 
to do something similar, maybe I hook up with some of the, the, yep. the tailors people yep. and so on, and that will you know encourage people. So I think that that's the that's the way I like to. Mm. The, the those people in technology, for example, we can always go to them when we need help. Like for example, mm. we're building some uh, new projects. Of course, some of those things like we're doing in my company that we want to launch, let's say in January. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm still old school. Uh, you know. I'm not going to be like vision, you know, put everything up on the internet and say, nah, this is how we do it, you know, you know, uh, you know? But, but we would like to, we would certainly like to say, um, I think everybody has, you know, the, the, the education market is so big, the task is so huge, I think everybody has, has their part to play. It's going to be a $12 billion industry. It, so. It's really, really big. So, so what we, and we find that we just, a, you know, the time drop. <laughs> not much impact but I think when you start to see people hey you know at you can for example let's say those people who are who are saying that they are doing this 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 that two three four five hundred and then when you get the at you can conference together two thousand people come together or let's say you know nightmare for saying <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, that's the plan. yeah then people will say wow there's so many people who agree with this who say that but they are in their own spheres affecting the change. I'm sure so many people like Sonali, like Alex and so on, they're all doing that in their own areas. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's see how we can kind of like keep that, keep, keep in touch. Mm. But wherever possible, if we can make the closer connections, then that directory will help. You know, say, hey, you know, why don't I ask you whether he does this? Mm. If not, then we'll, 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 we'll carry on. So I, I still see a lot of relevance. Oh yeah, it is, it is. Um, that's, that's what I'm saying, it's a, it's a, it's a pivot. <clears throat> and what you say actually is very, it nails it right on the, on, on the head. I'd rather have a casual meetups and actually interact with each and every one of you individually. Uh, if I bring speakers here, I actually don't have very much time to hang out with you guys and have a discussion like this, for example, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So that's why I say, I rather have kept. I, that's not, that's not, I'm not getting rid of the monthly casual meetups, but I'm getting rid of the fact that I gotta go and hunt two or three speakers, and then you know don't know, and then and then worry for the worry for thirty days whether or not you guys are gonna like the speakers and stuff like that, and so on, so on, you know. And and, and, and at the end of the day, it, people just say, oh, wish we got more time to hang out and talk. But that's why the previous editor camps always end up midnight. <laughs> you know, after the talks, everybody like, ah, you know, talk about more, 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 more. You know what? The talks. Was, was good, but honestly, everybody was like, just like this, just nothing. Hey, yeah, you know, we're all on the, we're all on the same page, we're all on the same mission, we're all on the same same track. Talking about building schools, I mean, a dozen people have already come out and said, I want to build a school. Uh, and then I meet those who want to build a school, don't know how to go about it, and I meet people who are already building about these schools, you know, and, and they are already sharing all the war stories of how hard it is, how difficult it is, but they are doing it. They know how to do it, and, and they are more or less like just saying that, you know what? If I could, if I can get the, if I can get, get the subsidy, I can get the funding, it's going to be free. Because there's so much money on the table being spent stupidly, you know, and then they're like, but I'm not going to get the money, so I have to, I have to, I have to find ways to make it profitable. But technology is accelerating that. The cost of technology, the cost of ownership, if we are slowly accelerating towards still making that relevant. So the challenge now is more evangelism, you know, specking the parents per se, uh, and, 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 and the teachers. Hopefully. Not specking the parents. Speck, smacking. Oh. <laughs> oh, whatever. Some violent act, yes. Can I go off topic a bit like, uh, regarding the project you talked about? Yes. I have an event coming up this Saturday and Sunday. I don't know how it's, you guys can help me for an event that's happening today. But, yeah. So if we have actually high school students or pre year students or teachers or parents who are interested in US education, come to Taylor's Excite Campus 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Taylor's. I actually brought the flyers here because okay. I was at Health University doing presentations to the students. But, and I can't stay here. Mm. Uh, yeah, and Mark will be there actually. So, yeah, Mark is one of the speakers. So, if you guys are interested, mm. awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I'm pretty new to this EduCamp, so uh, I don't really know what, how it's done for the previous. Yes. Uh, but uh, what I don't know about others, but what frustrates me is always there's a lot of talking going on, but there's no actions at all. Like there's ideas everywhere, but there's, there's nowhere to start. So I, I guess like there's a few things to the question ourselves, like 
why the first place that Edu can actually get created and developed, and what's the purpose of doing that? Okay, and then um, also also the tricky part of, of building a model of translate the idea into action. But I what I see that's a pattern like each of us have our own initiative, and you see Edu as a resource center to yeah. come and provide resource, or everyone should come together and then come up with a, a more collective initiative. Like EduCamp is not only really idea generated but action generated mm -hmm. kind of place. So I guess tricky part for this one. I mean it's good that we have like uh, workshops and brain trust projects but yeah. that's more hands-on and generate ideas because things need to be done when there's actions. Yeah. I mean talking is can, you can that that's only can go that far, you know. So actions really works. Yeah. So um, I guess the, that's why I say the tricky part maybe is to translate the ideas into actions. Mm. And I mean, no. workshops and projects may be a good step. Or yeah. you have to think of a more uh, sustainable model or a more uh, uh, feasible one to actually can replicate more initiatives. Like, do you want people to see EduCamp as a resource center and come in to scout for people, talents, resource? Or people come together and come with ideas and we work together, and it's not only like our own initiative, but as a wider initiative. I'll answer that. It has been a very, very valuable resource center. Um, we have about three or four teachers. Like Sanali is one. Um, then there was the I can't remember his name really. Two other teachers who come come as well, and, and they say, you know, they come and then they they learn. Uh, Najib, for example, uh, Hilmi, lecturer as well. Um, they come and they say, you know, every time they come, they learn another way to teach their kids, or they learn another. They get they get ideas. The teachers are coming here and getting ideas. Um, but Sunitri, you know, um, we are filming it and we're on YouTube, but. The truth and odds are that the teachers are not watching it. You know, how how do we how do we reach out to them? That's the that's the big problem that we're trying to try 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 trying to tackle and think about it a bit more as well. Uh, one of the brain trust projects. Um, another brain trust project is uh, uh, we want to try to set up a portal where we film professionals talking about their education journey, talking about the profession and stuff, and then it will become a a central hub where people can go and maybe maybe key in several topics and find out oh, what are the professions that I can I, I can aspire to be based on what are my topics of interest. <laughs> so stewing, these are all projects that are stewing. Um, the talks were okay. Uh, to be to be very fair, I mean I think the talks have been a, a, real, a real diverse uh, uh, subject to topics of matter where teachers come teachers come up here and share their experience about teaching, just to clarify the issue of you know. Uh, Clearing up the misconception that it was all teachers, all teachers, all teachers. Well, <clears throat> that's not the parents' fault. <laughs> um, we've got <clears throat> people from diverse backgrounds, musician, um, artists, come and just share the other side, of, other side of the coin and stuff. Um, but like I said, the, the talks were all good and stuff and so on and so forth. But like what you say, the action part is 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 is, uh, is, is a dude. No, I would say disappointment uh, because the action is happening, but they're slower. You know, they're a lot slower. So you know, they're not glacial. Or sometimes you just need to think a bit more about the things. So that's why I thought changing that format. The past format I've always been: I bring about two to three speakers. People come, they listen, <clears throat> and after that we have like sometimes discussion that go on till midnight. You know, um, but it has always been consistently coming to that same crystallization of. A, people come in here thinking that they just want to uh, uh, learn about how to teach their kids and then realizing that they got to learn how to learn, you know, or they, they, they have to change their mindset about the whole, what they think about education. We have somebody who come to talk about homeschooling. Um, we have somebody who's teaching at a refugee school and basically sobering up, uh, sorry, <clears throat> sobering us up, thinking that, wow, a refugee school will need a lot of help. They didn't, didn't need any help. They are already because they are not part of the syllabus. They are not following the system at all. They are free to do it whatever however they want, um, and with limited resources, they are practicing inclusive. Like what the uh, what's his name again? Uh, he was saying that why why should we uh, limit the, the levels of, of education based on age? The refugee school has got limited teachers. In fact, only got two or three teachers and a huge age gap. So they just teach math. All the kids, all the age, all in the same class. If you are. If you're better at math, you learn the standard five one. You know, if you're not so good at math, you learn the lower standard one. I don't care about your age. 
and then those who are stronger at math teach those who are weaker at math. They are they're doing all these things which you only get in Finland, eh? you know. So you know the, what it has what, what has happened is that all these talks comes in and it's opened up. I mean, people who are already passionate about education come in here, and they and and, and their realization of oh wow, you know. Uh, there are all these things going on, like what uh, Mr. Tang is also saying, the encouragement factor is very, very strong. You know, and I think in the, our past nine edu camps, it's just been reinforcing and reinforcing to, to the point where the, the brain trust group, the team is formed, where they're like exploring as many opportunities of projects and stuff, and then see how we can funnel resources and funnel things and, and, and just take it off, you know. Without the meetup, that's already happening. <laughs> You know, that's like the casual lunch meetup is already happening. I've been meeting uh, BFM, Malak Ali. He wants to start a business school. You know, uh, the BK Gun one, they're starting a Nexus school uh, where they're trying to go for the whole like one laptop per child or one iPad per child initiative. Uh, so all these things are already happening independent of EduCamp. And that's why I thought it's time to change the EduCamp format because that is actually the side benefit of the format is actually the one that's actually getting things more and more. So I rather put the side dish as the main dish now, which is the casual meetups and then the more workshop things so that people were like, oh, I want to learn about that, then they come, rather than come and I'm not sure whether somebody can come and give that, get, get the training. So I'm going to schedule the, 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 the workshops more, definite, more definitively, you know? Um, and then we'll ramp up towards an educate conference where as, more, as, as we get more and more, we get maybe 10 speakers or, or certain topics and stuff, Collectively, as a group, we realize that oh yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> encourage each other and stuff. We identify the strong speakers or the really, really like I would totally want Najib to come and give a talk at the uh, Educa you know Educam conference, you know, um, or Enoch, the guy who does a refugee school. I mean, that's that's tech, that's tech level. I thought he basically shares his story. Why why is he doing it? So the dots are all here. We've tried to connect it once, and it's like uh, you know, and then now we're trying to connect it in a different way again. And, and again, I would just like to, like your, most of you are new, I would like to invite you to uh, uh, help us connect the dots. <laughs> okay? So, oh my god, it's only 10.46. <laughs> Sorry, can you, can you post that? Can you post the event? Uh, uh, yeah, I did. You did. Uh, you know, like after a few times, or a few hours, it just goes down. <laughs> yeah. oh, god. Keep posting, keep posting. So, with that, um, I want to, I want to applaud you. I want to applaud you guys. Thank, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll be hanging out. If you want to talk more, uh, or you got any more feedback for for us about any camp and stuff. And uh, with that, good evening. Thank you. And uh, stay awesome. Thank you. Bye.